Boom. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Taylorera Show. <clears throat> you know the deal. We're rocking and rolling. Um, we have a roach problem, everybody. That's the newest. If you followed on, along with the problems of this apartment, that's the newest one. We got roaches. They're here, and they're and they're and they're they're trying to take over. Okay, these roaches are trying to take over, and we're not having it. Okay. Now, why do roaches? Why do roaches come? I don't. I don't know if they're the type of bug who like, you know. It's, it's summer outside. Most of the time, bugs come in in the winter because they're trying to escape the cold. But the roaches, it's, it's like they only go where it's gross, which is why it's a little disheartening that we have roaches because there were, there's always been roaches. I park my scooter outside the back of this apartment building, and it, literally when I come back at night, every time I park, there's like a motion sensor light that goes on when I drive in and then the light comes on and roaches just kind of scatter it's it's gross but they leave when i get there so we're cool and so there's always been roaches but we've never had them in our apartment which means we were not topping the the, the charts of gross apartments in this building and so they felt like all right we you know we got our fix in other places we can go what about this uh you know there's this this small family that leaves a bunch of shit out across from you guys. So we're going to go there. And, but, but somehow, just the two of us, Kate and I, have made this place appetizing for roaches. Now, is it a roach? Is it a water bug? Is it the same goddamn thing? It's the same thing. Roach, it's a roach. You little bug crawling in, in the garbage, it's a roach. And they're fucking quick, dude. They're so quick. Like, if you see a roach, you have to, you got to get on it. Because they will, they'll go under a crack you didn't know was a crack. You didn't even know it was there. They'll just, they'll just like go into the wall. And then you're like, all right, well, I guess that's it. You know? Or they just go into the couch. They go, I got these rat, or not rat traps, but roach traps. It's like it put you put a little thing in there, and it's supposed to trap them, and they go in there, and they get trapped and sticky. And uh, I got a couple of them, but uh, you know the war is on. Kate is not handling it well at all. Uh, she came. I was out somewhere. She came home late, and there were like three. There were like three roaches, and she just she just you know flipped out, and she tried to pick up like a box. She picked up a box and just dropped, literally dropped it from above trying to smash it and just didn't check to see if it was dead. She just left me a note that said, Roach Tomb, move at your own risk. So I came home, I discovered said said box, and I called her, I'm like, I don't know what this means because there was like an arrow. I didn't, I thought it was like pointing at the door. I was like, okay. She was like, no, there's a roach under there. I lift, so I lift the thing up. It's still, it's still alive. There's a reason why these things, they say, will survive nuclear holocaust. How do they know that, by the way? Isn't that a thing they say about roaches? That, like, you just can't, you know, like, they, you can't kill them? What is it? Roaches will survive nuclear bomb. Who's doing that research? Did you know that roaches will survive a nuclear bomb? Oh, yeah? How do you, how you, how you know that? Did you go into Hiroshima and start sifting through rubble and a roach fly away? And you were like, oh, wow. Did you, roaches, I guess, they survived nuclear bombs. No more, no more research to be done. It's given a lot of credit to the roach. I'm just going to say that. They can't, they're going to survive a nuclear bomb, but they can't handle my flip-flop? That makes no sense. So, oh, okay, it's a radiation thing. Most cockroaches can survive moderate amounts of radiation, and 20% of cockroaches can survive high atom bomb level radiation. So it's not the, like, destruction, it's the radiation. Got it. Got it. All right. Okay, Internet, I stand corrected. I stand corrected. 
I have a little bit of experience with roaches. A little bit. I used to work at a donut shop. I worked at a, it was like a donut shop, bakery, and they made everything in-house. And anytime, if you're a bakery, you got a lot of shit in there. There's going to be rats, there's going to be bugs, roaches, all that shit. And the one that I worked at, it was, I won't, out, yeah, fuck it, I will. It was dough. Dough Bakery. I don't even think they exist anymore. I think the business shut down due to like malpractice or like they weren't paying their employees. The owner was sketchy as fuck. Um, yeah, so I worked at Dough Donuts in Brooklyn and this place, was, the owner was never there and it was run by a young 20-year-old who all she cared about was just going out, getting drunk and... And, and giving away free donuts. That's, I mean, she was really bad at her job. But I was like, switch, I was moving job. I was like in a transition. It was a transitionary job. So, you know, I was just working the counter. I was working the counter at this donut shop. How easy could that be? Hey, you want a donut? Cool, which donut you want? Here's your donut. And that's the end of it. But this place was so disgusting. Because the back of the, it was like the, we had the front of the shop and then the back was where they made it. Think about that. All day, this place made donuts. That's just hot oil bubbling up and going up into the, into the, you know, there wasn't proper ventilation. It's going up into the room. And so everything is now like, it's becoming sticky. It's just hot oil all day. And then there's sugar. You know, because then they come out from the hot oil, and then they, you dunk it in the glaze, and then there's powdered sugar and sprinkles and chocolate chips, and, you know, nobody's careful. People are spilling shit everywhere, and no one mops it up. We're busy, you know? So there's just, like, some woman who's worked there for seven years, and she's the dunker of the glazed donuts. She puts them on a tray, and, you know, again, just, you know, spilling it everywhere. And there was a guy who worked downstairs. He worked... Downstairs of this bakery, underground, it it smelled, it was like this musty, thick smell where you're like, is, is that mold? It might be mold. It's probably mold. And this guy, no shit, I think the bakery had been there for like 12 years. And he had worked there all 12 years. And the only thing this guy did, ever did, was make croissants. That's all he did. He was the fucking croissant guy. He had one skill. That was his thing, and he nailed it. Like, he was li- he was a machine. That's all he did, and he took no days off. That's what somebody told me. They were like, he's here every day. He works every single day. You know, guy doesn't have, like, a family. He just comes in every day, and all day he makes croissants. Like... I, what is what like what is your existence like? That it's a separate that that guy's a whole separate can of worms. But anyway, the place was disgusting. It smelled musty down there. You had to like walk through these cro- like crooked like little back hallway. You know, it's been there since the eighteen hundreds. And then there was like a door that was under a stairwell, so you had to like crouch in to get to the bathroom. And no, but nobody's ever cleaned it ever. You know, and th- like the newest thing in there was the roll of toilet paper. You know what I mean? You ever see that where it's like a disgusting bathroom, but like a brand new roll of toilet paper? You're like, why? It, you know, it just doesn't seem. It's like an incomplete picture when it's a when it's a nice crisp roll of toilet paper, but then the 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 toilet and the bathroom itself is just blown out. You know, and so there were rats. There were like cockroaches all the time it was a it was a thing it was a common thing at the front of the shop where you had to first of all if you saw a cockroach you had to see the cockroach notice it you had to notice it before the customer saw it and then you had to get rid of the cockroach without the customer seeing it so I remember man so many times like you turn around to like Oh, you want a large coffee? And then you turn around and make the coffee. And like on top of the coffee cup, 
you know, like you have the stack, and then on top, there's just a fucking, it's just a cockroach, just chilling there. And there's a line of people, I'm like, how, how do I get this cockroach out? And so I remember I couldn't kill the cockroach, because it would seem super fucking obvious if I'm like stomping onto a, a, a stack of coffee cups. So I lifted up the first cup, and I just went, whoo. And I just gestured really quick, and I just flung the cockroach somewhere into the back of the bakery. So, you know, hopefully didn't land in, like, the fry later or into, like, the vat of sugar. We don't know. To this day, I don't know. But I didn't know that going into the job that that was going to be part of my job description to, to be a fucking exterminator. You know who was the exterminator? It was the owner. That was the, that was the only time I ever really saw him. The only time I saw him, he'd come to the to the shop and we'd be like, "Hey man, there's a real problem with the cockroaches." And he's like, "Don't worry." He was a Russian guy. He's like, "Don't worry. You know we take care." And he would go out to his truck and he would bring back a blowtorch. And he would come like when the hours were slow and he'd have us take everything out from inside of, like, the shelves and stuff in the front of the shop. And then you'd start to see shit crawling around in the shelves. And he would get under there and just start blowtorching the cockroaches. Just blowtorching. It was it was very bizarre. He's like, oh, that's what you do. You just have to blowtorch, you know? You just hit them like this. You blowtorch, roach. You take this, boom. You try. No, my friend, you try. I don't know if that's Russian, but that's, you know. He's like, you blowtorch the roach, you know? Just like we did with the Polish, you know? We blowtorch the roach. I don't know if he said that, but, you know, he had the demeanor like he didn't care not only about cockroach life, but about human life. Do you know what I mean? One of, the, one of these, like, business sociopath kind of people where... You can see that they're trying to manufacture a different type of emotion. Like their base level is not really an emotion. It's 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 like the vision of an objective. You have an objective and that's what you're going towards and there's no up and down of an emotion. It's just a flat line of purpose. And that was this fucking Russian guy. And so you never really knew what you were dealing with. So when he came in, he would walk in with a blowtorch and just start gutting these roaches with no expression on his face. And you're like, dude, have you done this to other things? Why do you have, first of all, time out. Why do you have this blowtorch? Is it is it just for roaches? Or do you run some type of, you know, saw exhibit in your basement in Brooklyn because because I would because if it came out I would believe it I think what dough owner dough donuts owner that something happened with this fucking guy uh, uh, quitting her Man, who is the fucking... Uh, something happened. What happened to Doe in Brooklyn? Oh, uh, business partner. Uh, anyway, something happened where he he fucked up and then and then got in a lot of trouble. Uh, fuck, I'm not going to find it. Uh, shit. I don't know. Anyway, he did something super sketchy. And I think it was, I don't know if he was, he's not like the owner, 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 but he was the owner of that store. You know what I mean? Or he was like a co-partner in that store. And he was skimming off the top or done something. So I just read that there was like a, a woman who was also an owner and she's like expanded and she's done, she's doing something else now. So, you know, it's probably not the, it's 
probably not all him, but he was a big part of it. He was a reason. I think they reopened now, it looks like, but they shut down for a while. And uh, God knows whatever he was doing in that in that gap of time when he didn't have a bakery to run. Like, you know, whatever he shifted his purpose to. Who knows? When he didn't have the bakery, some something else was getting blowtorched. You know that. I know that much. You just use blowtorch. You just have to do... You, you blow the roaches. That's it. Is that a good Russian accent? I'm not that great at Russian. I don't hear a lot of Russian. But that's like a... That's an accent that you can attempt, and even if it's bad, nobody cares. You know what I mean? Is that, I don't know if it's because Russians are what? That you can do it, and it's totally okay. You know? You can't, like, cultural appropriate a Russian because they don't really have much culture. They do a little bit, but, like, I don't know. Vodka isn't a... That's not really a culture. You know what I mean? Vodka's, vodka is not a culture. It's just a thing. They don't really produce much, do they, huh? There's not a lot of, like, Russian art... Is there, I guess, the ballet? But there's not a lot that you can make. I feel like there's not a lot that a country can produce under true, like, oppression. You know what I mean? When you don't have the freedom and creativity to do something, you can't just fucking... That's why you can't culturally appropriate the Russians, because they don't really have a culture. You know? I don't know. Who knows what's cultural appropriation anymore? I never I never truly, like, I guess I did a little bit, but to me it always came down to intent, and I'm going to stumble through this here, but, like, you know, if you took something from another culture, if you're using it, if you're kind of doing it to showcase the culture, then I don't think that's bad. But if you're use, if you're taking it and pawning it off as your own, and not giving credit? I don't know. I don't know how you give credit. You know what I mean? Like, if you wear a, a fucking, you know, hat that is, it's, you know, if you wear a Russian hat, you do, are you supposed to walk around every person that you see? Like, this is, just so you know, this is a Russian hat. So it's not cultural appropriation. Like, if you, if you're, oh, I, it's, there's a lot of white guys in Bushwick who have dreadlocks or cornrows. You know, what's what's the status there? Have we come to an agreement on whether or not that's okay? Do people really care? Or is it just one small subset of the internet that thinks that shouldn't be a thing? Like, do people really... And if they do, that's okay. But do people really give a fuck? I don't know. Listen, I'm gonna... I should clear this out. I should get this out on the record now so it doesn't come back to bite me when some picture resurfaces. I, by today's standards, am a huge, uh, I don't know what the word, I'm, I'm blanking on the word, but like I was, I was involved in some cultural appropriation, let's say that, or some, some appropriation of culture that wasn't that tasteful. It was in a show. I was doing children's theater Basically, I was in middle school, and we did a production of Annie Get Your Gun. It's a musical, and I didn't sing. So I would just, like, anytime there was a musical, I wanted to be in it, but I couldn't sing, so I would always play a part that was just a speaking role. And the only speaking role that was available for me to play was Chief Sitting Bull. Now... You know, just by the name, you could tell I don't look like a chief sitting bull. Now, it didn't it didn't even occur to me at the time that it may be wrong for me to play that role. And you know what? I don't think people thought it was wrong at the time for me to play that role. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. We did several performances. Performances. And I was I wore the full getup. I had a headdress. I had a full ass headdress and makeup that was probably not done 
well, you know, I wouldn't call it black or brown face, but it was, you know, it probably wasn't great. I know somewhere there's probably a photo of me in full headdress. But it's not my fault. Like, I didn't know somebody, I was a kid, somebody else, if it was wrong, somebody else older than me should have been like, hey, maybe not. But then again, uh, you know, that wasn't the issue. The real issue was that I... You know, I'm playing a role. I'm playing Chief Sitting Bull, who was a real guy, by the way. Isn't he? Was? Is, wasn't he? Chief Sitting Bull. Yeah. Of the Lakota fucking, uh, of the Sioux Warriors. Political and spiritual leader, leader of the Sioux Warriors who destroyed General George Armstrong Custer's force in the famous Battle of Little Bighorn. Right, I knew he was a big fucking dude. Yeah, so I played that guy. I should have played General Custer, even though that's not what the show is about, but that's who I look more like I should play. And not... you. But you know what the thing was? At the time, I didn't know what a, a you know, indigenous Native American person sounded like, and I kind of still don't. So I was I was just winging it. I'm just winging a voice up there. I'm like, oh, welcome to our land. I did like a very offensive Japanese guy. Because I didn't know, like, that's just what came out. I wasn't even thinking Japanese, like, oh, I'll do a Japanese. That was just what came out. I didn't know. Oh, welcome to our land. And I'm like, that's, that's you know, that's probably, is that good? And no one, no one fucking said anything. The director didn't say anything. The cast didn't say anything. None of the parents who came to see the show said anything. So, I don't know. I thought I was, everyone told me I was doing it. This is why you shouldn't always encourage children when they do something. You know, you should correct them when it's wrong. Everybody told me that I did a great job. So, you know, I like encouragement. I need love. I'm up there. I'm trying to ham it up every night. I'm like, oh, welcome to it. And they're just, you know, people are just like, oh, wow, he's really going for it. Nobody said anything. They're singing their songs, and I'm in the back probably doing it. I'm making up like a rain dance, you know. I have like a brown. It was horrible. It was horrific. It was horrific. If I did that today, if I did it today, It'd be bad. It'd be real bad. They probably don't even do that fucking show anymore. I mean, when's the last time anybody did Annie Get Your Gun? I mean, it's a it's a fucking show from the 60s, for crying out loud. Annie Get Your Gun. Um, performance... Uh, is that how is that how you would search for it? I guess I don't know. It hasn't been done in a very long time, and it probably won't. Or if it is, they're gonna go to somewhere in the middle of the country, or they're gonna go to fucking a reservation, and they're gonna they're gonna yank a dude out of a legit reservation and be like, "Guess what? You're going to Broadway because we don't want to get sued." Okay, that's what's gonna happen. They're gonna be like, "We can't put this show on." without a legit, you know, legit Native person, Native American. Are you, what is the word? Why do I feel like I'm saying the wrong word? Why do I feel like Native American was out the window two years ago? Nobody, can we have a running list? Can, we, can somebody just keep a running list of all the shit that you're not supposed to say anymore? Is Eskimo okay? Does anyone know? Does anyone know? Or is it Inuit? I don't know. Stop yelling at me. I can hear people yelling at me. No one's yelling at me. Is Native American offensive? Is Native American or American Indian prefer? I wouldn't even have thought American Indian. What is correct terminology? Please, can I get a white person to explain which is less offensive 
to the native people. Hmm? Generally speaking, both American Indian and Native American are okay to use. Generally speaking, both refer to indigenous peoples of America. That said, the best term to use in a given situation usually comes down to preference. So it's like pronouns. What's your pronoun? What's your preference? American Indian or Native American? Cool. I will I will bring that up next time I see a fucking Native American, which also I'm not going to know if they're Native American or not, and I'm definitely not going to ask them. Hey, are you a Native American? Why? Why do you want to, you know? American Indian. Native American. Um, Indian. I don't know why we call anybody. Or Native peoples. Native people? Why is it peoples? Peoples. (sighs) Dude, I'm so dumb. What is American Indian race alaskan native alaska native american indian or alaska native american indians come from alaska a person having origins in any of the original peoples of north or south america including central america and no and and who maintains tribal affiliation or community attachment dude i'm so lost i don't know i don't know the fucking rules man I know nothing about the Native Americans. All right. If one day it's it's turned out it turns out to be a bad thing that I played them, yell at my middle school or was it high school? I think it may have been high school. My high school drama teacher. All right, go yell at her. It's her fault. It's not mine. You know? I don't know. I feel like if you get in trouble for something like that, it's not most likely, you're probably not trying to be a bad person. You can, you know, you can turn it around. Have redemption of some kind, right? Isn't that what this, isn't that what this country that the Native Americans founded, uh, isn't that what it's really about? It's about the, the American dream of, of starting a business, and it's about redemption and uh, finding Jesus Christ. You know? That's what, you know, that's what Justin Bieber did. Justin Bieber apparently turned his whole life around because he found the Lord. He was, he was living just, he was snorting cocaine, just banging a million chicks, drugs, sex, rock and roll, tour buses, no sleep, drinking, and then and then he found Jesus Christ. You know, that's apparently what happened. He did all that shit, and then he found Jesus. How come Jesus is always hiding at the at the bottom of a mountain of cocaine? You know, have you ever noticed that? That's always where it's like, dude, I was at rock bottom. I was at rock bottom. I had nothing. I was doing blow every night, huffing whippets and shit. You know? I was getting I was getting prostitutes and I didn't call my kids and you know, it was it was bad and I was laying down in the street and then I found Jesus. Why was he there? Why why is that where Jesus was you never hear you never just find jesus at a normal like dude i was i was in walgreens and i was picking up some paper towel dude you're never gonna guess who i found fucking jesus holy shit dude jesus was right there in the in the aisle with the shampoos can you what he's never he's never he's never there you just don't understand, man. You don't understand. I was down, and then I found Jesus, and now I'm up. And now I'm up. I'm, like, doing... I'm, it's the character of, like, a guy on, like, all those TV shows where, like, you know... It's like, man, I was down and out, bro. And then I found Jesus. I feel like, you know, you can only use that... 
you can't, you can only use that excuse for the worst shit, right? Like, you know, you're a friggin' murderer on death row, and then miraculously, right before they flip the switch, you find Jesus. He doesn't save you. He just comes in and be like, hey, what's going on? Uh, I'm here. If you want to say anything, no promises, but I'm here. All right? All right. I know you murdered a whole family, but hey, I'm here to listen. Okay? I'm here to listen. That's me. Good old Jesus. Yep, just showing up when people are in need. Yeah, there's a uh, earthquake in Haiti right now that uh, I don't mean to put any guilt on you, but I skipped it for you. So, just saying, if you want to want to give me something, you want to make some confessions, it's up to you. But uh, I, I would I would strongly advise to make. You know what I mean? Jesus showing up and you like giving a final prayer to Jesus. It's like it it doesn't mean it's gonna automatically get you into heaven, but it might help. It's like it's like a cover letter. You know? Talking to Jesus on your deathbed, that's a cover letter for a job interview. You know, it may be appreciated. It might be appreciated. Couldn't hurt. Couldn't hurt, but it may not get you the job. I don't think it's totally gonna get you could have a badass cover letter, but if you your resume is shit, it's not, you know, not gonna totally work. Anyway, fucking my phone is blowing up right now. Uh, all right. Anyway, that's the podcast this week. Thanks for listening. Um, you know, thanks for being on this journey, everybody. Thank you. If you and you know what, if you have any, uh, you have any thoughts about anything I said, if you you know about the about the cultural. Pro- Tune in. DM me. I don't know. I'm trying to figure this shit out, too. Or or if you disagree with anything I said. You know, hit me up, too. I don't know. Let's figure it out. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Oh, boy. Here it comes. <laughs> COVID. All right. Peace out. Don't get the Delta. I'm out. Peace. <laughs>